Welcome, my viewers and my listeners, to the program Celebrate Your Moment with Joy. This is Pastor Florence. I want to take this opportunity to thank God for the privilege of sharing His word. I also want to take this opportunity to thank you for the time you take to listen, to watch, to practice what you learn, and even pray for me and sharing with other people. It's good when we know that we, all of us, we have a special place in the kingdom of God. So in that case, I am here to encourage you, to inspire you, to remind you, to mentor you, to challenge you, to know that you have a special place in the kingdom. My weekly schedules are Monday through Wednesday. I bring inspiration word, and actually Wednesday is the moment with Hana Waja. Sometimes I'll step in for her. And that's this, celebrating in the kitchen because what we put in this body is of importance because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, we need to take care of them and be mindful. Fridays, putting on the right gear for the weekend because you and I have been created by God, positioned so that we can live with integrity and carefulness in life. Saturday, Sunday, I know it is important to have a home church just like I have. That's why I don't bring any show so that you can go to your respective places of worship. I'm mindful of our brothers and our sisters who go to church on Saturday. That being said, you are well covered. Sunday to Sunday. What reason can you give of not serving God, or God of not standing firm? So stay with me and I know we are going to be blessed. Be expectant. As the Lord uses me, I'm able to be used by the Lord. Uh, for today, I'm going to be speaking something. The called ones. The title of my message will be The Called Ones. And I'll be basing my sharing from the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. Ephesians 4, from verse 4, and I'm going to go for there. And then I'm going to quickly uh, share from the book of uh, Philippians 4, uh, Philippians 3, uh, 14. It may sound like it's too much, but stay with me, and I'm not going to take that long. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you. I want to bless you for your goodness and for your mercies that endure it forever. As I share your word, oh God, use me as a vessel. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to thee, King of Kings. I pray that I may decrease as you increase. I cover myself in the blood of Jesus. I dip myself deeper in the blood of Jesus from the hairs of my head to the toes of my feet that I may minister under that anointing that breaks every yoke. Take over. And for my fear and my reason, and I pray that this word may go further. Oh God, it's a seed that will be watered by the Holy Spirit upon his or her heart to be encouraged and to be equipped for your second coming in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The called ones. In Greek, called ones means called out. Yeah? The book of Galatians 3, 26 says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. I tie that one to remind you we are the called ones of Christ by God. You have been called, I've been called, we've been called. Let me jump and go. I go to Philippians 3.14. This is Apostle Paul who wrote this. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. For every call, there is a price. And Hebrews 6, 10 says, our God is not unjust to forget our good work. So you are the called ones. You've been called. The, 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 sorry, the, the Greek word for called were out is ekresia. You've been ekresiaed. Now, let's come to the main one, Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 4. The Bible says, there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in, on, in, in the hope of your calling. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Verse 5. There is one Lord 
of well, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, number six, one God and Father of all, who is over all in all, and living through all. Verse seven. However, He has given each one of us a special gift. I hope you can highlight that or underline for that case. I will repeat. However, he who has called us out has given each one of us a special gift. You have a special gift. I know I have a special gift. And that's why I don't want to misuse it. Through the generosity of Christ, verse 8. That is why the scripture says, when he ascended to the heights, he read a crowd captives and gave gifts to his people. You are called by God. I am called by God. We've been given special gift. And you cannot say that you are not gifted. Each one of us is gifted. I always like to give my example. You know, my husband, Mr. Minor, is so gifted with dealing with kids. That's a, a very special one. And I remind him time and again. To be honest with you is because maybe I have an evangelistic call. I'm not very patient with real ones. Not that I don't laugh. I do. But I didn't have to stress myself and put on that gear and tighten the nuts. But for my husband, it froze very well. It froze. You know, whatever you have been given as a special gift, you froze so well. And you feel so compassionate about it. And you feel so energetic about it. Just like I do right now what I'm doing. My brother, my sister. We are the cold ones. The cold ones is you. The cold ones is me. The cold one is us. But as we've been called. Just like the body has many parts. You've been called as one part. Very special for the body of Christ. If I am the mouth to speak the word, there is a special gifting and special grace that comes with it. Because time and again I say, and I want to repeat it again, that for every assignment that God gives, it comes with a package of grace. So whatever God has called, given you as a special gift, there is a package of grace that comes with it. That is to say, you're going to do it when you are enjoying it. When the people get into presses which are not their special gifting, they struggle, they compete, they complain. No, oh, they get drained away. Can I say that personally I know I have a special gift of giving. I'm not talking about giving money. That is also involved. Giving the word of encouragement. Sharing the knowledge and the ideas. Many people tell me, even in the media, they come in and say, woman, you are right to yourself. There is nothing for free. Let me tell you, you who is under the sound of my voice, I thank you for the concern. But freely I've been given the gift of encouragement and freely I'll give. That does not mean you don't say, you know, you, uh, you don't celebrate the you know, ministry of celebrate your moment with joy. When you do it, by the way, you don't do me a favor. I'm not being rude. You do yourself a favor because you are doing what God has called you to do. I know there are some special people in the community that God has have been, have given them a special burden for celebrate your moment with joy. Like when I have the events, I know the decorations are taken care of. Oh my goodness, I know the arrangements are taken care of. And I'm told, Pastor Florence, you relax. Because they cannot, and one of them, sorry, I don't know she'll know who she is. One of them, like, taking pictures. She doesn't even like to be in the public. But what she does is, like, the agent of the events when we have them. May God bless you. That is realizing your gifting, your special gifting. And it is a good thing. And God has to uh, have to help me work on this. Not to push people where they are not called for. Because most of the time I get people <laughs> unaware and I'm prepared and tell them, come up here. So my brother, my sister, what am I saying? The called ones. You are one of the called and you have a special gifting for that call. Mm. My brother, my sister, when you are the called ones, there are things that you have to know. And I'm going to mention three of them and I'll be done. The first thing, you must realize it yourself that you've been called. I'll repeat it. You must realize that you have been called yourself. How do you realize? You have to realize by reading the word of God. You can never know unless you read the word of God. That's why I started by reading the word. 
I know God has called me. I know in the book of Isaiah, he said, I have called you and I'm holding you with you my victorious right hand. As I do this ministry, I know God holds me. You know, last Sunday, the pastor was preaching and I felt, my God, this is my message. That we don't give because we have. It's not the whys or the whens. But when you know you've been called, you do what you've been assigned to do in Jesus' name. The second thing is, you must know who has called you. You must know who has called you. I know God has called me. Mm. He has called me. I have answered. He has called me. I have answered. He has God me, I have answer, and now I am somewhere working for my Lord. I am somewhere working, working somewhere, working, working somewhere, working for my Lord. I am somewhere. Walking, walking somewhere. Walking, walking somewhere. Walking for my Lord. When you know where you have been called and who has called you, you are not going to complain. I don't expect any pay from man, even though they may be mandated and many times are mandated to be a, to, you know, to come and bless me. But it is God who has called you. When you know who has called you, you stick to the call. So the third thing will be, when you know who has called you, you work without reservation. You do the assignment without reservation. And that's why I ended up reading Philippians 3, verse 14. I pressed toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I am working towards the call. I'm working towards the goal that I've been called for to encourage, to mentor, to, oh my goodness, to encourage, to inspire. And you know, I also have come to realize throughout my life that God will always connect me with the people who are going to encourage me to continue doing it even though there are some that come and I realize and shh, I just put them aside, you know. Because when God connected me to this man of God, you know, Dr. Charles Karuko, that was the time he was uh, 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 preaching in Kerry Inn in Minneapolis. And in actual fact, I was connected to him through Pastor Zipporah, who is also my spiritual mom, uh, figure, or mentor, through the Kenya Day of Prayer, when he started the prayer for the Kenyans. And I was attracted kind of by the picture that was posted there. You know, there are some things that you can never deny, that there is something that will come so that you creak with someone. That's how I clicked with Pastor Zipporah. God bless you, woman of God. I love you and I honor you. And then, through her, I came to be connected with Dr. Charles Karuko. You see how God comes? Then I attended the teachings. I attended the teachings and there I came. I went to the school of, of, of ministry. There I was ordained. And my goodness. And now when I try to look back, Dr. Charles Karuko have a passionate for souls. And here I am. Pastor Zipporah is passionate about the community and about the world. And here I am. Hey, my brother, my sister. Then comes, I'm just watching on the media. I am heading somewhere. I'm here, watch, I like even before I sleep. To at least listen to a message of a man or a woman of God. And I'm here, I'm listening to several of them. And here come the woman of God, Apostle Teresia. Oh, of synagogue of hope, and she's preaching about the, the spirit of stagnation. Ah, we click. And it is good when you click, you take a step. Yeah. I clicked with Pastor Stop, Spora, I, I took a step. I clicked with Dr. Charles Karuko, I took a step. I clicked with Apostle Teresia, I clicked, I took a step. And now here, there's another man. Oh, God bless you, man of God. Dr. Bishop Stephen Jenga of One Word. International Ministries. I'm part of it. Though I may be far, I always tell him. My office is there and he tells me, yes, you man of God. Yes, you know, and in the media, he called me. You must stay around. 
He called me, I think, in 2017 or 2018. And I was at work and I missed the call. And I called back and he said, oh, he had watched me, you know, posting things. And that was when it was One Word Radio. We have come from far for One Word Digital Media. I am here. I am part of that. Yeah. So what am I saying? When you know you are the called ones, the Lord will guide you to the people you will click with who will be able to nurture your calling and encourage you. Because it is good you know when you are the called ones. You don't relate with everybody. No. You are not called to every, to work with everybody. There are some times that God will call you for separation. I know for those people in the community, they know me. They used to know me as a woman who make uji, such that even the event. Yes. But you know you have to know that there are time frames. I'm sorry. I'm not being proud. But please don't put me in the porridge making. I am in another spiritual porridge making. I love you so much. I know once in a while I will do it, but if I do it by choice, that's okay. But please, people in our community, I love you. Because as we continue in the call, we must know where God is taking us. You don't stay in level one when God has taken you to level three. One time I told one of my mentees something and said, Mom, I did not know. She was kind of rude, but I stayed traced and her. I did not know that when you become a pastor, you get to another level. You know, because I'm here to correct and also to rebuke. And she got the point. What am I saying? You must know as God take you from one step of glory to another. As God elevates you from one level to another. I don't say you remain proud. No. Like now, I used to attend to almost every community meetings or events. Until the read. Pastor Gero. Or don't you say. Mama Kahiga is always everywhere. And just many people say that. You'll be here, you'll be here. I must say that I am growing old. The speed I used to work with to come from work and make uji, I may not be able to. I, I would be denying if I say that uh, my body now cannot move as fast as I used to. I cannot do so many things as I used to. What am I trying to say? Because I'm a mentor. I want to mentor somebody who will be making porridge in our place. In my place, yeah. Let us, and for those who have not identified their calling and their special gift, it is when you have failed what you have, the simple gifting that you have. My brother, my sister, God is calling you so that he, can, he is reminding you that he has called you so that you don't just remain where you are. The called ones, the Greek ones, word for called ones is ekresia. Which means called out. You've been called out. You as a young mother, you've been called out to be with other young mothers. You've been called, those in the community, to come and start making porridge. You've been called to start encouraging people. I never used to travel a lot of fry a lot. These days is not a big deal. I don't even see like it's a lot of money. And by the way, I work hard to pay the air ticket. When it is paid, I thank God. When it's not paid and I have the ability, I know it's not about money. It's about obeying to the, uh, sticking to the core that God has put in your life in Jesus' name. And I want to remind you because we are one body of Christ, God has given you a special gift for the community, for the family, for yourself, for even where you are. At my place of work, there are places I'll be put and all of a sudden I'll find myself somewhere. You know, somewhere else where I was not assigned. Because there is something that God has put in me that I have to step out even when I've not been assigned there. For if, Okay, now as I finish up, I want to remind you that you must press towards the mark of the, for the price of the high calling of God in you. We are the called ones, but you have to work at it. You must realize you've been called. You must know who has called you. You must follow. You must press forward. Stick. Be persistent. Be obedient. Hold on. And learn to encourage yourself. And know that you cannot do it alone. We have to do it as a community. By the way, this beautiful outfit you are seeing here. I never bought it with my money. It was given to me by one of the ladies that always realizes how important it is to tap from the anointing, she bought it for me. It's, it's an old one, but I love it. I value it because someone realized their special gifting is to be a blessing to the pastor. That time I was not even an ordained pastor, but she recognized that call in me. In the community, I know there is this lady I value so much. I don't, we, we, we don't always get together many times. Joanne Misoy, you started seeing the pastoral heart in me, even before I was ordained. God bless you. You know, there are some people that God will call and 
and you will affirm what God has put in you. I had always said I would never want to be a pastor. Maybe you are saying the same way. But I tell you, you are the called one. You have a special place. You have a special, special gift for the body of Christ to make it better in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your word. I've given it. If I've exceeded, Lord, help me. Forgive me. If there is something I have left behind, oh God, Holy Spirit, put it that your daughter and your son out there will get it, oh my Father. God, I pray that, Lord, you take all glory and all honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Because we are the called ones, there is a special gift that you have in that call. I pray that you will start with the basic step of accepting the Lord and tell him, Lord, I want to exercise my special gifting for the body of Christ. And you cannot do it unless you have told the Lord Jesus, come into my life. If that's you, I've never given your life to the Lord. You want to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. Forgive me because I've been just living without even realizing that I have a special gifting. Now I come to you that you forgive me. Write my name in the book of life so that I can start lowering over and knowing my special gifting for the body of Christ. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. And give me a desire to grow spiritually. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you've been transformed. The word is, the word, the word is God and the new has come. Now, God will start showing you your special gifting. God will start reminding you. It's he, him who has called you, not men. When you come to join, celebrate your moment with joy. It's not Pastor Florence. It's God, but just using you to tell you. Like I've been speaking to people. May the Lord God bless you. But two things are important. Testimony of what has happened in your life. You can't afford to be ashamed. Not, you know, uh, 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 that you have trusted the Lord. Testify of him. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, they overcame by the word of their testimony and by the power of the blood. You also need a home church. As an ordained pastor, I am a member of Grace Fellowship, Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. I, I'm not a pastor there, but I serve. I serve faith free. I'm in the dream team. They always say every other Sunday, but I said, no, I didn't tell them, but to my God, no, I have to be the house of the Lord. Because David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. My buddy Nancy, we serve in door three. Sometimes I'll be working overnight and then I'll come there. Why? Because if I can work double to be paid money, eh? why not work double in the house of God? So may the Lord God bless you. And above all, celebrate every moment, not just celebrating, but celebrating it with joy and quiet. Because every moment matters, every moment counts. As long as you're breathing in and breathing out, remember to subscribe to my channel. I do subscribe to my channel. Remember to follow all the